I'm Sarah, otherwise known as Yarn Mugs on Instagram and Ravelry. Welcome to my podcast where I chat about knitting, crochet, sewing and the books I've been reading. It's the 1st of April 2024, so yeah, welcome. I hope you're all okay. I've got loads to share with you today, so um, yeah, lots of finished things and some yeah, lovely things that I've been working on, so I hope you enjoy what we chat about. I'm just going to have a slurp of tea. So it's Monday, Bank Holiday Monday, we've had the Easter weekend and we've been really love, lucky with the weather. It's been um, yeah, bright, sunny, we had a bit of rain but, um, but generally yeah, it feels, feels really, really spring-like, it's been lovely. So I'm filming at a very unusual time, four o'clock in the afternoon and again on a Monday but I am off because of the Bank Holiday. Um, but yeah, it's not too bright and it's peaceful in the house. So yeah, I'm just gonna crack on and show you what I've been working on. First of all, I'll tell you about what I'm wearing. I'm sure those that have watched before have seen this dress. It's the indigo dress by Tilly and the Buttons in a really beautiful, um, it feels a bit like seersucker. But I think it's probably um, a linen um, and this is from Pigeon Wishes. I bought this at a Stitch Festival last year. Um, yeah, really happy with it, it's lovely. Okay, so those that have been watching my Friday vlogs would have seen me finish up my latest Felix cardigan. So here it is. Um, I'm really, really pleased with it. Um, on my Friday vlog, I was trying to choose buttons and I had a mixture rather than enough of the same. And what I decided to do was just put some pretend buttons all the way down and alternate between these lovely kind of wooden ones and these beautiful real wood ones that have been, um, I want to say foraged, but that seems a strange word. But you know, when you find things on the beach, it's that, they are really sweet. And I've, I've used that blue yarn to sew them on. Oh, I'm so happy with it. I'm just gonna lay it over me. It's really, really lovely, really soft. It's blocked lovely. The yarn, just as a reminder, if anyone has not seen this before, let me just get the right um, Felix. Um, yeah, it was Jameson's Ultra Hell Double um, in two different colors. I think I might have got rid of them now because I showed you last time, I think. But one of the blue ones, Water Lily, and the kind of beige colour one is called E Sit E E S I T. No, I don't know what that word is. It's 50% lamb's wool, 50% Shetland, and it is very soft, but as light as a feather. It's very, yeah, drapey. I'm really, really happy with it. I love the long cuffs that I've added. I've used every bit of yarn that I had. I'm loving the collar and the neckband. It's just, it's got to be one of my favourite patterns. And those that have seen me before, I'm onto my third Felix. Yeah, really, really love it. But really happy with the buttons. Now I think I had, oh, here it is. Yeah, this is where those beach combed, that's the word. What did I say? Foraged <laughs> beach comb buttons from Lilliput White. Um, she's based in the Isle of Wight and I, found her stall at a yarn festival. I can't remember which one. Um, yeah, I can't remember, but yeah, really lovely. And I had lots of compliments on the kind of mix and match of the buttons and also the fact that, you know, we did, I did the pretend buttons all the way down, but yeah, it was no, um, <laughs> nothing clever. I just thought, oh, no point leaving two buttons or three buttons, I might as well, yeah, use them all up. But yeah, absolutely love. Now I was really careful when I was sewing the buttons on to make sure that my stripes lined up because with my last Felix, I made a bit of a mistake and I've had to go back and recite the buttons so that the stripes sit nice because it really stands out <laughs> if that stripe is a little bit off, but I'm, yeah, I'm really pleased. So yeah, lovely, a really lovely finished. I've not really worn it much. I think I've worn it a couple of times, but it's been getting a bit warm, so I haven't felt the need, but how lovely to have a lovely cardigan all ready for when it gets chillier at the end of the year. Um, regarding my other Felix I just kind of mentioned, I've not worked on that at all, so I'm not gonna show that. Hopefully next time I would have 
focus a lot of time on that and that might even be nearly finished. One um, pattern, another finished one that I've recently finished was my Dainty Diamond Crochet Blanket. I've shown this a few times, but again, I just really cracked on, got that finished and oh, I'm so happy with it. And I love the cream and the white together. It's just a lovely vintagey feel. I just did a simple, just trebles all the way round. I, I didn't have loads of white yarn left and I wasn't gonna buy any more and I just wanted to keep it nice and simple. It's so lovely, Stylecraft, special DK. I put it in the washing machine and the tumble and it's come up lovely. But yeah, beautiful pattern, really easy. And I think I joked that I'm gonna be keeping this for if my daughter has a grandchild in the long distance future. I just, I just remember as I was making it, thinking, oh, this is the kind of thing my nan or mum, you know, would have made for me if she was still alive. And it just, I just had this urge, I've got to keep it. Not in a morbid way, you know, you just think, what if I'm not around? But I just thought I really want to start maybe collecting a few little bits and bobs just for the future. You never know one day if, I don't know. I just had a, had an urge to prepare and make something that's beautiful. I just watched a bit of um, Paula from Stitch by Mrs. D and she made a really beautiful little baby cardigan. And that really um, reminded me of my nan who used to make baby cardigans all the time. And in fact, I have got a bag of her unfinished, um, yeah, matinee jackets, she used to call them. So lots of separate sleeves, separate fronts that, that all kind of need finishing up and sewing. Some haven't got button bands and um, yeah, I'm going to really, um, yeah, I'm gonna make an effort and finish those up and then give them to my daughter and my nieces who you know, all like would be great grandchildren of my nan. Just to think in the future, if they ever have children, to have one item of something that my nan made would just be beautiful, wouldn't it? Um, and I feel like I've had them in a bag for years. My nan died in 1999. So yeah, I really need to do something with those. But this kind of rem makes me think of my nan and in, in those kind of vintage style baby things, generally in white or pastel colours. Um, yeah, so hopefully I'll I'll be sharing them with you as I as I finish. But when I saw Paula's beautiful little cardigan, oh yeah, I nearly cried when I looked at that because I just thought, yeah, that's what my nan used to do all the time. She always had baby baby makes on the go, and even if it's just for a future baby, it's a lovely lovely thing to make, isn't it? Now, last time I showed you these lovely riptide mitts that I'd made and after I'd finished my Felix cardigan I had some yarn left over and I, th I, I remember weighing these I'll just have a look what I put down I think these um, these weighed 45 grams for the pair and I think I had 50 grams left. I thought, I'm going to make another pair of Riptide mitts. So this yarn was, um, oh, let me have a look again. Oh, I'm sorry. Mm. Yeah, it was Isaiah Tweed in navy and I had two 50 gram skeins and it's 70% wool, 30% mohair, but I held the yarn together to make a DK weight. So they're quite substantial. They feel not too chunky, but yeah, they feel lovely and, and thick. Whereas this yarn, in fact, it's not, it isn't this leftover yarn. Do you remember I said last time, that's the Jameson's, but I had some different, I don't know if you can see, it's a little bit gray, and the blue's a tiny bit different, nothing major. That was the yarn that I had left over. And it was this um, from years older. I'd had a yarn club a few years ago. And it's 100% um, wool, which is 70% lamb's wool, 30% Norwegian pelsol in the colours Aegean and Nimbus. So that's what I had left 50 grams of. But it's actually... Um, now, 
where did I see it? It's sport weight. I, I didn't realise it was sport weight. And I think sport weight is in between four ply and DK. So I made another pair of beautiful mitts. That's the palm side. That's the front with the pretty pattern. I'll just put them on to show you. Oh, they're so sweet. They are definitely a lighter weight, but they'll still be nice. And look, I've done a little um, lighter colour. Oh, it, it, this is such a gorgeous pattern. So this is um, the Riptide Mitts by Jennifer Shields Toland. Um, and I made the size small. And I think I said last time about this Riptide, the only thing I did different was I didn't like the cast on. I couldn't do tubular cast on. So I did my normal cast on the same as I did for this. Um, I made the size small for both. I used um, a 3.5 mil for the rib and a 3.75 for the main body of the mitt. They talk about using an even smaller needle, I think for the tubular cast on, but I just went for the, the middle size one and the biggest one. Um, yeah, so, and that, that's the other thing I was gonna say. So. These are sport weight, this is DK, and they're definitely um, a different size. So they've came out, the, the gauge looks similar, you know, it's a nice, nice textured fabric, but they're definitely a smaller mitt compared to these DK ones. And I didn't really realize that the yarn difference um, until I'd made them. And in fact, this pair only weighs 25 grams. So what an amazing, um, yeah, product you get out of a small amount of yarn and when I saw it in the balls the balls were tiny you know you just think that's never gonna make something you know substantial and aren't they lovely it's beautiful that blue color and I've made this for a friend it's my friend's birthday next week and um, I'm gonna give her these she'll love them but yeah I really liked the little different color on the cast off it's literally just the cast off yeah so I'm really pleased with that. I would highly recommend this beautiful pattern, Riptide. Really lovely, really simple and really quick to make. But yeah, these, oh, as soon as you put them on, yeah, they definitely feel a bit more substantial and chunkier, but these will still be lovely. So another lovely thing finished that I hadn't even started last time, but um, yeah, I'm really pleased with them. Beautiful. Okay, that's them. Can get rid of those little labels now um oh yes and then i've just finished yesterday i finished my socks for my dad um oh they look lovely like that now it's, this is not really my cup of tea the the colors or the but it they do look nice don't they and i have shown my dad when i've made one he was really pleased with them so these, this yarn is from Beaches and Birdsong. It was a yarn club ages ago, and the colourway was Toba Mori, um, and those that you saw at the children's programme, Balamori, the colours of the houses um, were these different colours. But Toba Mori is a real place here in Scotland. Um, and these are 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, and it was just a 50 gram for the main colour and 20 grams for the contrast blue. And so I just did two rows of each, holding the yarn up as I went and carried on doing it until I ran out of the blue and then just carried on with that main colour. And they've come up lovely. It's just a pattern I made up myself. It was just a toe up sock um, and it was knit four pearl two and just did that all the time so every single round was that apart from the bottom where the sole I just did a plain knit and a one by one rib so yeah really pleased to have these finished my dad really appreciates hand knit socks so even though I don't really need any more socks for myself I'm just going to keep knitting socks for him and build up his little collection so yeah that's my cardigan the blanket the mitts and the socks. Lovely, so that's all my finished things. Not all of them, all the finished things that you knew about from before that I've been making. The other things I've been working on, 
is my granny wrap using the yarn from my lay family yarn retreat that i went to last year alongside um gainer from tales from cuckoo she designed this um herkle durkle yarn and when we were at the lay family yarn retreat she did a version of this before we all knew that she was going to be creating yarn to be sold so oh i'm so loving working on this so this is um the granny wrap by anna boo's house it's a free pattern on her blog and i've just started off doing alternating herkle durkle with a color uh, and from the retreat you get about i can't remember how many it is 16 people were there and so you get everybody's sample of their mini so I've done one round, so I've done all of the colours and then I'm starting now to go through those colours again, but just doing one row per colour. And it's lovely, it's getting bigger, but just not big enough to tie around my neck yet. But yeah, loving that. It's a lovely pattern, made it before, but it's even lovelier in this you know, super special yarn. And hopefully I'll wear this when I go to the retreat in October. No, I think we're going in November. Um, but it's lovely the colours are so nice all you know by non um, yarn dyers it's such a lovely experience to have a practice at um, dyeing your own yarn have you all seen Sandra from Cherry Heart she's been up there as well and so she's the second friend to be creating yarn and I've just ordered that as well it looks beautiful so yeah that's been a lovely easy project to work on just going back and forth with my granny's granny trebles it's lovely now i've picked up a um a project that i've not worked on in ages and ages i have shown this before on my on my podcast um because it's a one of those long-term projects that will probably just grow and grow and it's um you know historically people were making sock sock yarn blankets or just leftovers from your socks but I, I, I've just used all my leftover four plies from various um, projects to create um, granny squares oh, and it's lovely so for those that haven't seen it before it is just a mishmash lots of different yarns no particular order or pattern but all I can remember well, I can remember lots of them but what I remember is this one was the first square and it was my first ever pair of socks from some commercial yarn I can't remember what the yarn was now but um yeah it's lovely and it smells so nice you know um even though it's been in that bag for ages it just yeah it smells of yarn you know sheep is what I mean to say so yesterday when I finished my dad's socks, I thought, oh, I must put that into the bag for the granny squares. And I just pulled it out and just thought, oh, I'm gonna sit and do some. So yesterday I started here, that's my dad's one. And I just did a whole row and then turned the corner. And I was watching someone the other day, who was that? They were talking about, you know, when you're adding squares, because in the past I've gone all the way round and it just takes absolutely ages whereas they said just do one down and one that side and then you just keep building that up I suppose I could turn it around and so rather than having to go all the way round you're just creating a, a 90 degree angle of squares so I thought what a good idea so yeah I just need to go along that side and then um yeah it, it's growing lovely so it's hard to see with all the holes in, but, um, and I've just used every little bit, every little bit of scrap. I don't always like it when I've had to use two colors, but ultimately it's just nice to use everything up, which is my favorite thing to do. So yeah, that's a really lovely, lovely thing to get out every now and again and add to. I really remember this lovely travel knitter yarn in her baby camel. Oh, it was beautiful. And I really remember this yarn. Again, it was from a yarn festival 
um, but this grey with these lovely flecks of bright colour. Yeah, so it's funny, isn't it? You can remember some of them. Loads of them are just commercial sock yarn, but um, and this is in a lovely bag. I've had this for years as well from Nicola Bumble Stitches. I think she, I remember she just started to sell some bags, and I thought, oh, I'm going to grab one of them before um, you know she got super super popular. So um, yeah, just really really wanted to get a bag. Isn't it beautiful? Lovely. Now, over the bank holiday weekend, I just have had an urge, so those that have watched my Friday vlogs will see some of this, but I had a real urge to use up my scrap fabrics and make a book cover. Um, so last year I bought a book cover and it's made it quite um, thick. Um, I suppose it's like a linen and there is a bit of um, like wadding in there as well. But as soon as I bought this, I just thought, I really want to be able to make these. So I found a fantastic tutorial. Um, I'll link it below and I linked it below on my Friday vlogs and I made my own book cover. So this again is in fabric I've used previously for a dress and that one's a dress as well. And I put a bit of, um, I'm saying wadding, interfacing, can't remember what it's called now. Um, just gives a little bit of a a thicker feel and I you can't really see but I have done some top stitching all the way around it was such a quick and easy thing to make once you've um, followed the instructions for how to layer up all the different pieces and you just sew it in one go so it was it was really quick and satisfying but so um rewarding you know to just yeah to use up the fabric but also to have created a really lovely lovely book cover so I'll definitely be making more of those in fact I went through a lot of my scraps and I kind of cut out so they weren't all um, scruffy you know I kind of evened out edges so I had nice big squares or oblongs and all the um, scrappy bits I turned into like five by five or ten by ten squares to maybe one day do patchwork quilting and or lavender bags so yeah I've had a real kind of tidy up and making sure that I can use all of the scrap fabric up to make beautiful things so yeah really really happy with that and then and i also had this urge to make a tote bag and i had seen a really good tutorial but in the end i didn't follow the tutorial and i just got out a tote bag that i like because getting that right length with your straps is really important isn't it so i've got this bag i've had this for ages proud to be a knitter and it's for me, this is just the perfect, you know, it's perfect strap length and a nice decent bag. It's just one piece of fabric, so there's no lining. And it's only in, like, say, this cotton. Really, really simple. So I turned this bag inside out so I could just try and deconstruct how it was made and then made my own. So for any Star Wars fans out there, I made that and I know it's only a square but it's still a process isn't it learning how to how to create something and again happy with that strap and a decent decent sized bag so no linings one thing I didn't do which I wish I had done if I'd had the overlocker out I wish I'd overlocked the seams but that doesn't matter this is going to be for my daughter it's really lovely fabric, little spotty. And I bought this pre, I think I bought it during COVID and I made some masks out of this for family members that liked Star Wars. And I did, you can't really see it, but that kind of cross, you know, to sew your um, straps on. But again, it was really simple. And when I made it, oh my God, I was so happy. It was like, how can something so simple, yeah, bring you such, um, you know, make you feel proud and bring you such joy. So I made that and that took a matter of hardly any time at all. And then I had an urge, right, I'm gonna make a lined bag. And again, I didn't follow any instructions. I just thought, oh, this, I can do this. I have made a few mistakes and I will follow the tutorial next time because I have watched this tutorial quite a few times and it is lined and there are no, um, 
you can't see any seams. It's all got kind of done inside out and you know, flipped out. So a bit like when you do a project bag, so you can't see any seams, but I'm still happy with it. So it's in this beautiful cotton fabric. I've got a dress in this. Again, the same straps, and I've also lined it in this lovely green, which goes really nice with it. This is a bit more of a wider bag, but still the perfect kind of strap length. I'm really happy with that. But again, I wish I had overlocked because again, I've got a lot of these seams and the bottom seam, but I know, like I say, I just wanted to have a go. I just wanted to make, make something and just be creative, but I'm still really, really happy with it. It's only the seams and no one's going to see that. So I feel like I've got a few things that I could make out of leftovers that would make something really beautiful for myself or as gifts. I would buy this in the shop and that Star Wars one. If some, if, if I saw that in a gift shop, yeah, I would definitely be buying it. So again, I've got all of these fabrics almost ready and prepared um, to turn into bags. I know um, Ali is doing her dodgy bag um, now, so I might even enter them into it because they are a bit dodgy. But yeah, anyone who's a bit nervous about making things, like I say, sometimes you just have to give it a go, don't you? And I, I remember sitting there holding the two outer, the two inner and the straps and trying to layer it up thinking, how do I work this out? So when I turn it inside out or the other way around, it will be right. So yeah, even that, just having a go is really um, good fun. But I'm really, really pleased with this. Yeah, lovely. So they're all the makes. Yeah, I'm really, really happy. I've had a really good um, month of making. Um, a nice selection as well of, like I say, knitting, crochet and sewing. Um, and it's given me future plans as well, things to think about. Lovely, so that's all the makes. Um, it's a sip of tea, and then we're going to talk about books. Now, I realised last month that I forgot to mention an audible book that I've been listening to. So I'm going to make my way through. And for those that are interested, I always put um, details in the description box under the more arrow with links to all of the books that I re read and I listen to. So... Yeah, I'm currently using Audible to listen to books as well. So the one book I forgot to mention last time was The People on Platform 5 by Claire Pooley. Now this book was recommended by my friend Jenny, who I met at Lay Family Yarns Retreat, because I'd also read one of Claire Pooley's book before, and it was The Authenticity Project, which I loved. Um, so I read the, or listened to The People on Platform 5, and it was a really sweet, really easy read and very much like the Authenticity Project. Um, and it was based on a group of people. That's what I really love about certain books when you find out about people's lives and personalities and then how they all kind of interlink with each other. And it was about a group of characters on a train um, going about their day, going to work. But yeah, it was a little bit predictable, but it was very sweet and made you feel good. It was a nice listen. Um, yeah, so that, that was lovely. So that was last month and I'm, yeah, I just forgot to mention that. Um, then another book which I read for my work book club was this one, The Group by Mary McCarthy. Now this has been really recommended. This, is, this, is, this book um, was written, let me just see, I think it was written, 1963 so it is of its time no it's not it's written about a group of women in the 1930s who all went to a university in new york but it's also about yeah the time what life was like for women in that time uh what life was like for if you were married or relationships or had a baby all sorts of things but it was so Ooh, what's the word? It was a slog. I really thought, I'm gonna love this. I love stories about people. I thought I'm gonna to get to know all the characters because it said the group follows eight graduates 
as they find love and heartbreak and choose careers and husbands against the backdrop of 1930s New York. So I thought, oh, I'm going to love it. I've been to New York and I love New York. And I, like I say, I love you know, stories about women. And but, oh, I couldn't even name the eight women. You know, it's just, it focused on a couple of them. Um, yeah, some of it was kind of interesting because you think, oh, at the time, is that what that was like? Or is that what that was like if you had to go to a family planning clinic? And there are certain things that, you know, made me kind of be interested. But most of it was like, oh, this is really hard work. I did read it all. There were better chapters towards the end. Some of it, um, and again, it was just like you say, it's of the time. Like they spoke, there was a part in here about having a baby and in those times babies were kept separate from the mums and even like views about breastfeeding so that was sort of interesting but sad and but just generally I just thought oh this is you know it was a slog and my whole book club all felt the same not everyone finished it but everyone was you know finding it hard so yeah I wouldn't recommend it it's a shame because it, it yeah it should have been really really interesting um yeah, and some of the, you know, I know, again, could it be of the time, you know, just the behaviours of men or how women were treated? Yeah, that's, it's just a bit, you know, a bit depressing. But, um, yeah, have, have any of you read this? Because it's a bit of a classic. When, I'm, when I read all the kind of reviews from people who absolutely love it, you know, yeah, I don't know. See, you can't like them all, can you? But, yeah, have, has anyone else read that book? That's going to the charity shop though. I'm not going to even pass it on to anyone because I think, oh no, that was not not the best for me. Yeah, I put disappointing, didn't like the characters, quite depressing view on breastfeeding and boring. I suppose that's, that's really hard, isn't it? When you think, oh, there's so many things I could be talking about, but I felt a bit bored. Now, my most recent book I finished, and it's only the other day, is this. Oh, it was lovely. Um, I've read Tracy Chevalier's books years and years ago. I read The Girl with the Pearl Earring and loved that and read a few others, but I can't remember the names of the other books. But this was beautiful. I loved it. And again, funnily enough, it's about the 1930s and women, um, post-war, post-World War I. Um, but the thing that was beautiful and touched me was about um, it's about a group of women who belong to like an embroidery club and they're embroidering things and they talk about this love of the colours and the texture and doing things in their spare time because you know, they're loving it so much but it's also much deeper than that and it's about relationships and um, yeah it was really touching it was lovely I wrote what did I write I put beautiful story of Violet in the 1930s relationships view at the time and wanting to be an independent woman and then i've just put in brackets embroidery i'm going to say as well bell ringing <laughs> so it's, it's about different characters and things that they did in the, in the in the community and and some of it is quite there's quite um there's a um what's the word i'm trying to think of an element of uh yeah being quite tense there is some yeah, challenging scenes in there, but it was really well written. I loved it. So yeah, I'd really recommend that. Beautiful book. And then I've listened to quite a few. I listened to The Secret Garden by Frances Hodgson Burnett. I listened to that with my group of friends who, when we listened to books together, I'd never read that book as a child. So I had no idea really what it was about. And I've just put that, it's a very sweet story about friendship and I loved the Yorkshire characters. So yeah, I really loved that, listening to that. Um, and even though it's a children's book, it was really touching, I, I really loved it. I also listened to Ultra Processed People by Chris Van Tulliken, um, and he is a UK doctor. He's on the TV with his twin brother. And I found this book really fascinating. Um, it's a really interesting research-based look into why we eat what we eat. Um, and there was some amazing research about weaning babies. Um, yeah, years and years ago, it was just yeah a fascinating book. And I suppose it just really highlights how we live in a in an era of eating a lot of ultra-processed food. 
um, and it's quite difficult not to, you know, and I do make a lot of my food from scratch, but even, you know, even bread, you know, or things that you think, oh, that's just simple, but, it, it, you know, certain things have been so processed, you know, so, yeah, really, really interesting. I think if I'd read it, it would have felt quite heavy, but listening to Chris um, read it out loud, especially all of the research and all of the additives and bits and bobs that they put in foods that you know are quite long and hard to say um yeah it was really really easy listening to as i was driving along um yeah fascinating book really really i'd recommend that really good um i also listened to another book by francis hodgson burnett and that is a little princess um and i found this not to be as good as secret garden but i really loved it in the end um, and the characters, yeah, I really, really loved it. The girl, the main character is called Sarah, and I'm Sarah, so it's quite funny just listening to them say that all the time. And there was a really horrible character in there called Miss Minchin. She was horrid, but um, yeah, it was good. But at the beginning, it was very similar to A Secret Garden. So I remember as I was listening to it, thinking this is just the same, but it does change a little bit. A lot of these books, um, are often kind of like rags to riches or you know um, really sharing the difficult challenges of the time you know that children had to endure so yeah I, it was really really interesting a bit like David Copperfield how I felt about that some of it was quite hard you know to listen to but also then there's some positives as well um yeah so that's there's loads of books there that I've been listening to and I've read um, and I'll add them all at the bottom or in my little description box. It's just starting to get sunny now, isn't it? I feel like I can't, I'm really, really squinting. Um, but yeah, I think that's probably about it. So thank you for watching. I hope you've liked seeing everything I've been working on, all my finished things. Um, and hopefully next time there'll be lots of new things because I've got, yeah, I've got plenty of time now to cast on new projects. Um, thank you for everyone that watches and comments or just watches as well. I'm really, really grateful. Um, and for any Kofi donations, that's always really appreciated. And it all goes straight back into buying yarn or patterns or attending, um, you know, yarn festivals. So it all, all goes back into this podcast as well. Um, and for the Friday vlogs, I've had some lovely comments on them. So thank you so much for those that are watching my Friday vlogs. I'm really pleased up and able to keep that up. And they are really, really simple. The same as this podcast, really. I don't do any editing, you know, it's, it's, it is what it is. I just film. But I really, yeah, glad that you enjoy a little, a little glimpse into my life on my days off on Friday. So I'm off now. I'm going to watch this video, make sure it's all OK, and then get that uploaded later. And have a happy April, everyone. Happy crafting. See you soon.